I apologize for it not being, you know, really great because uh, there's a lot of, uh, the Velodyne generates a million points per second in this point cloud out here. I mean, you can see the guys sitting in the booth here judging. Um, here goes the car through the intersection here. You can see that little box we're tracking its velocity vector. There's another car sitting here. There's one here. There's one over here. And and the cameras on board are you know also uh, I think there's two of them front and one rearward that are on the on this demo here. But basically what happens in uh, so what happened in uh, this iteration of the challenge, instead of having an arbitration-based uh, philosophy, what we had was everything fused in this map here. And uh, there were some weighting factors and some rules and, and some things that were great and some things which got us into some trouble. And again, this goes back to how do you handle an overabundance of information. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So uh, before this starts, there's a couple of cars at the intersection here and uh, we go around the corner and right after we come around the corner, uh, this is where we see Cornell in our lane. And you know, it's not exactly like we had a lot of extra room with our truck anyway. It was the widest wheelbase truck and the longest wheelbase truck and um, I should not, you know, make that an excuse because we feel if you can't drive this truck on the road then there's something wrong with you because it represents what a military mission would want to use anyway. You want to carry some cargo. So you can see Cornell coming up here and they're coming into our lane. And uh, there's another vehicle in front of Cornell. Maybe Cornell's trying to pass it, I don't know. Um, one of the DARPA rules was that if you had to pass somebody or make some alteration that kind of violated the rules, um, you often had to s stop for five seconds before you did. So that's why we're actually stopped here. They're very close to us here, and I wish I had the side camera turned on, but basically we end up riding up alongside the, the curb here, and you know we give ourselves you know, less than a meter to get around them here. I'm not sure if Cornell stopped because they saw us or if DARPA gave them a pause or whatever, but, but uh, when Norm showed, showed that graph earlier in the day, there were a lot of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle interactions like this. And, and here's Cornell's chase vehicle coming, coming by. I wish you guys could see the raw LiDAR. The, 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 the images really are stunning. It, it's a great sensor. coming out of the center. Um, so we're coming out of the parking lot and we're going down this really narrow road here and it's really quite embarrassing and uh, I'll explain it to you once we get there. I mean there's really nothing in the way where you know you can see a DARPA observation tent down here and uh, there's a stop sign which is coming up which I think will light up in the, the LiDAR here pretty pretty soon. Let me just pause it right here. So if you look down here, there's, there's a, a, going across the road here is a rain gutter and there's a stop sign here. You can see the stop sign brightly lit up here. Um, one of our algorithms uh, took all the data from the LiDAR and it mapped, it mapped the ground plane in front of us and we had a we, we had a definition for what constituted uh, uh, traversable terrain. Well, for an F-250 with big tires, almost everything's traversable, but, but, you know, generally speaking, you don't want to drive across curbs because they usually tell you something about, you know, where the sidewalks and roads are. So, uh, it turns out that this rain gutter, the uh, discontinuity formed by it was uh, the same threshold as a curb was. So we get to this stop sign, and you can see we've painted a line out here for this rain gutter. That's what this green line is saying, you know, there's a curve there. And uh, we just sat there. And the reason we sat there um, is, is mostly stupidity on our part. Um, most teams, when they get uh, to, 
spot in a race and they're confused, you know, they give up and they say, okay, I can't make it through here, I'm going to, you know, make some new assumptions. And uh, in, in the case of most teams, the first assumption you make is I'm going to ignore painted lines on the road or I'm going to ignore curves. And uh, generally there's some sort of criteria or timing threshold where you go from one state to another. And in our case, um, I believe the state to ignore a curb was a, a, to wait for two minutes and see if you know if you, if you had resolved it by some other method. Well, about two days before this, um, we were out practicing. Um, you saw uh, Oshkosh do their demonstration of doing a U-turn on a really narrow road. Well, about two days before that, we were out practicing that maneuver, and our truck has far, far worse turning capabilities than theirs does. And what would invariably happen, happen to us is we'd hit that two-minute threshold before we had finished the U-turn, and we'd suddenly say, you know, hey, forget about the curb, and then, you know, we'd go off into some guy's yard. <laughs> and uh, so we were working on uh, fine-tuning the, you know, you know how, how far we crank the wheel over and how far we back up and how close we let ourselves get to the edge. And, and to temporarily force the vehicle to do those U-turns, we set that timer to be two zero minutes instead of two minutes. So we get to this stop sign right here, and uh, we're waiting now for the timer to kick, click down to two zero minutes. And uh, DARPA calls us and says, hey, you guys, you know, you're just sitting there doing nothing. And uh, we're going to drive you out there and uh, remove you from the course. Well, we got to the car at 16 minutes with a valid route planned off onto the road with uh, four, three or four minutes waiting for the timer to expire. It was really, really stupidity on our part. But such things happen.